Okay, we're live. Welcome everyone. Um, very glad to be hosting this uh, to be hosting this webinar again. We've had this webinar in Portuguese, and uh, Davina uh, found the patience and the time to make this webinar again for us for a different audience in English, which is really good because uh, our bird watching festival is known for for bringing people from pretty much all over the world. We, for example, last year we had over 30 uh, countries joining us um, from every single continent. So it was, it was, it's really important for us to have uh, diversity in language as well in our present presentations. Um, for those of you who might not know uh, Davina or her work, uh, Davina is a biologist. Uh, she's, uh, she's currently uh, representing the Bio Living Association. Um, she's uh, right now. She, she's going to be talking to us a bit more about snakes and uh, what uh, the, the types of uh, the species of snakes we can find in Portugal and how to identify them. Um, but she's also known for her work as a scientific illustrator, which is uh, extremely interesting. I've I've known that that's part of her of her curriculum for a, a longer time now. I think uh, a lot of people from, from our area of nature conservation have heard at least her name. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, she found the time to teach us a bit more about snakes, why they're important, um, why they are sometimes get a bad rap, and at least in Portugal, and uh, why mo quite often that reputation is not deserved. <laughs> Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'm going to pass this on to Davina so she can tell us a bit more about her work. And um, yep, that's it. Davina, it's your, your audience. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to make a screen share really quick. Here we go. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, I really appreciate that people from different countries uh, actually want to learn about the snakes from Portugal. Uh, this really gives me a lot of uh, hope when it comes to snake conservation. It's the curiosity from everyone. Uh, the, the need, the, 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 the motivation to learn more about these animals. Well, um, so today I'm going to talk about the 10 species of snakes from this country. Um, as you can see, there are not many sp uh, species of snakes in Portugal, but the few that we have, they are very interesting and very beautiful animals to look at. So first things first, as many of you may know, not every reptile that has no legs or virtually no legs are snakes. So we have a different groups of reptiles uh, that actually have a snake-like um, look to them. One of them is the, um, the Amphisbanian. It's practically a blind reptile. Uh, sometimes it's called, uh, in Portuguese, it's called blind snake. Um, then we have the slow worm. Uh, in Portuguese, it's called licranço. This is a lizard. It also has the ability to detach its tail, just like uh, all other lizards. Uh, then we have also the, um, uh, in English, oh, I completely forgot its name. I'm so sorry. Uh, but in Portuguese, it's called furapastro. Oh, in English, it's the skink. Um, so this one has very short legs, uh, unlike the slow worm, uh, but it also detaches its tail. Why are these two not snakes? Well, one of the reasons is they have uh, eyelids. Snakes don't have eyelids. Uh, in this case, it's very obvious. Uh, it also has legs. Um, and they also have uh, the, the, 
the ear, okay? So these are just other type of reptiles, they're not snakes. Then another important thing that I really want you to uh, keep in mind, there is this idea that a snake that has a triangular shaped head means it's dangerous. Uh, this is not true. Many snakes deform their head so they can look large and um, more dangerous looking. These are the examples of three species of non-venomous, uh, non-dangerous uh, snakes. So the, these snakes are harmless to humans. Um, and they have the ability to make their heads look a more triangular shape and they are not dangerous. So this is not a very good way of identifying a dangerous snake from a harmless one, okay? So when we want to identify snakes, we really need to pay attention to patterns, colors, sizes, and all of these details together will help you identify the species. So in, in Portugal, it's rather important to see if the pattern has a zigzag-like aspect to it, if it is speckled, if it is blotched, the color is important to know if it is uniform, uh, if it has several colors, and the size of the snake is important too. For example, if you find a very large snake, then definitely is not a dangerous snake. Then you also need to remember this one small detail, th these details that, um, there is a lot of color and pattern variation in the, uh, in the same species. Um, our memory and perception sometimes might not be sharp, especially when we stare at the snake for just a few seconds. Sometimes we find the snake and it just goes away. Uh, so on those flighting moments, we might not be able to memorize exactly what we just saw. Also, you should uh, take to account that sun, uh, direct sunlight might give it an illusion of a different color in the snake, okay? Now, going to basics, uh, this, uh, you will be able to uh, identify snakes uh, more easily the more experience you get with it. So the more experience, the easier it will get, but um, for now, we should start with the basics, which means you will see a snake, take a photo, you will have all the information you need to identify it, and it will not be in those uh, more difficult situations. Um, I just want to show you an example of color and pattern variation within the same species. This one is a Montpellier snake. And all of these three, uh, all of these four variations are in within the same species. Here in the top uh, left, you have um, a baby individual. It basically doesn't even have a, it doesn't even have two months old. It's a very young snake. Um, as you can see, it has a lot of speckling and blotches on its dorsal uh, part of the body. Then here we have a female on the top right corner. It's a female. As you can see, they are more dull look looking in terms of colors, but um, brown and more or less uniform. Then down below, the two other individuals are males. We have on the left, a lighter type of male, and then we have a darker type of male. Okay, and all of them are the same species. Daniel? So, yeah. Uh, just a quick side note: there, there's there's a person here asking for you to say the names either in Portuguese or in Latin, just just once for context. Okay, um, so this one is a, a Montpellier snake in English. Portuguese is cobra rateira, 
and the Latin name is Malpolon Monstasulanus. But I will have the names written down in just a second. Don't you, don't you worry. So I'm going to start. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the more popular one, the one that everyone worries about, which is the Latastes Viper. Um, Vipera Latasti. So this snake, it's the one that everyone asks about for obvious reasons. It's venomous and it can deliver a, a bite that might cause some concern in terms of health. So it's not extremely toxic, the venom, but you should seek medical help um, once, if, if such thing happens to you. But they are very easy to identify. First, they are rather small. So if you find a huge snake, definitely is not a viper. So they, they only um, grow up to 70 centimeters and this is a maximum size. It's very rare to find a snake this big, a viper this big. They have an extremely well-defined zigzag-like dorsal pattern on their back, okay? And they are very, they are rather short and stocky. They can be brown, they can be pink, more or less, pink, not bright pink, but you know, a more pinkish look, uh, but the most common are the gray ones and brown. Here is an example of a brown uh, Latasti Viper. This one was an adult. This one was a juvenile, okay? A very important thing in the Latasti Viper are the cat-like eyes. The, the other snakes of Portugal, they have a round pupil, while the Latasti Viper has a, um, a line its pupil is a vertical line, okay? Also a very important detail, it has an upturned snout. That's why in Portuguese it's called vibra cornuda. Cornuda means horn. So it, uh, so it means it has a small horn on its snout, okay? So everyone is on board with this one, right? So let's talk about the harmless ones for now. One of the most popular and easiest in identifying are the leather snakes. So a leather snake can grow up to one meter and 60. Uh, they are well-built snakes. They have dark eyes, not lines. This was supposed to be dark eyes. Sorry about the typo here. Uh, on the, the back, they have dark parallel lines that run down the whole body. And they tend to be light on color, a light caramel brown. Sometimes they can be a little bit more yellow, a bit more grayish, but the usual color is this one, the caramel brown, okay? Then the juveniles are a little bit more patterned. Uh, instead of having the two dark lines running down their back, they have transversal dark lines running down their back. This is why they are called the leather snakes, because they look like they have a leather on their back when they are juveniles. They are also have a very high contrast. Uh, the, the lines they have are very, very dark against a very light body, okay? So now this is the part where I'm going to ask everyone to participate a bit. I will need to see where the chat is. Give me just a moment, I will have to open the chat. Okay, so here is one thing that I will ask everyone to participate because now I will start to make a quiz asking everyone for their identification here of the species. So which species is this one? Uh, 
Please, uh, everyone, yes. You can all write on the chat of this uh, webinar. Uh, just while everyone is typing, um, there was a request here to very, very um, shortly um, mentioning the distribution of the species that we're talking about. Okay. If it's, po if it's possible. Yes, yes, maybe. yes. Okay. The, the, both the leather snake and viper are distributed along the whole country. There are few areas where they don't exist, obviously. Um, but basically, they are uh, distributed along every part of the country. So I, we got a lot of uh, replies already. Oh, okay. Apparently, yeah. everyone thinks it's a ladder. Yeah, leather snake, exactly. Very well, very well identified. This one, which one it is? Exactly, Viper. Yes. What about this one? Okay, so it's a young, a juvenile uh, leather snake. Uh, Micah, I saw you wrote adult leather snake. Um, no, it's actually a, a juvenile because it has the leather-like uh, the leather-like pattern on its back. The adults don't have the, the leather. The adults only have two parallel lines on the, um, on the back, okay? Uh, so yeah, this is a good thing. Everyone uh, mm -hmm. managed to identify one harmless snake from the viper, which is something that I really want everyone to be able to do here. So let's go to the next snake, the Montpellier snake. Um, this one is the largest snake uh, species in Portugal and most likely Europe as well. Um, so they have, this is the male. They are distributed also throughout the whole country. Uh, they are probably one of the most common species. They are very well adapted to urban life. They are very, because they feed on everything, basically. Um, birds, rats, mice, uh, lizards, they eat everything. And they don't mind as much the human presence as many other snakes. Uh, they have big eyes, a green head and neck. Uh, they have the, uh, followed immediately by a dark section of the body. And then it, begin, it begins to be brown the dorsal part is brown and the flank is dark, sometimes speckled with white, okay? Also, the females tend to be a little bit more dull in color. They don't have as many colors as the males. Some females are a little bit more patterned with more speckles. Uh, but they don't have those colors as well-defined and contrasted as the, the males. Then the juveniles have a very, they look very similar to the females. The, the main difference is that they are uh, more, they have a higher contrast. Uh, they tend to be, they have dark blotches on their back. Uh, they, uh, but then they are lighter in color. The, the rest of the body is lighter while the 
blotches are more dark, okay? Also, the proportions are a bit different. The babies tend to have bigger heads, uh, while the females have smaller heads for a larger, larger body. So let's go to the quiz again. Which species is this? You can write on the chat, yeah. Okay, so uh, Carlos, this one is a viper actually. Uh, it's not a Montpellier snake, the cobra raptor. It's not that one, it's a viper. Uh, why is it a viper? Uh, it has a pattern, zigzag pattern on its back, while the male uh, Montpellier snake, hey, take, a, take a look, the Montpellier snake has a way different body shape. It doesn't have the pattern on its back. Um, it has the green head, while this one, as you can see, doesn't have any greens. It has the zigzag pattern on its back. It, uh, it has a more stocky, fatty look uh, to itself. Um, and also you can see slightly the the nose is has a small horn on the snout okay now which one is this Yep, everyone got it right. It's a leather snake. What about this one? Exactly. It's a Montpellier. Exactly. A juvenile. For those who said it is a, a juvenile, it is. Very well. So let's get to know. Okay, the difference between juveniles and adult females. Well, the size is a good start. Uh, the, the female adults are really big, while the juveniles are rather small. Um, but if it is a photo, a good example here, uh, this one, this snake in particular was going to enter shed. So it was going to shed its skin very soon. So it looks a little bit dull in color, but it, you can notice here that it has rather large head for the size of its body. The eyes are big, um, while an adult female has a really large body for the size of its head. So you can, see that that's a good way of seeing a, di uh, a difference between the two. Um, so let's go to another species, also rather common, uh, distributed all over the country. Basically, it's the horseshoe whip snake. Uh, this snake is also a very large one. It's also a harmless. Uh, they tend to be dark uh, with rather well-defined blotches closer to the neck. And as you run, uh, as you go away from the, uh, the further you go down the body, uh, the darker it will look. It tends to have light speckles around the body, especially on its flanks. Um, they are uh, also they they are one of the few species that has this rather orange uh, neck. They have an orangey neck, um, sometimes pink, 
Um, but when they are juveniles, they are very, very light uh, in terms of colors. So the blotches are very well defined among all body, while the adults tend to have a well-defined blotches only near the head, okay? Then um, they have a horseshoe mark right here on the, on the head. Um, also, the, the individuals, some adults on the south of its range, so in Algarve, Alentejo, they tend to be a little bit more light. Even the adults tend to be a little bit more light than up in the north. The no in the north of Portugal, uh, the, um, uh, the horseshoe whip snake tends to be dark, while in the south tends to be a little bit more light, okay? So let's go again to the quiz. Which species is this? Exactly, leather snakes. Exactly, juvenile, very well identified. What about this one? Exactly, horseshoe whip snake. That's a very good, well identified. As for the size, how big is it? It can grow up to one meter and a half, sometimes very rarely a little bit more. Uh, in Portuguese, cobra de ferradura. What about this species here? Can you identify this one? Exactly, a viper, very well identified, that's nice. And what about this one? Exactly, it is a Montpellier snake. Um, Susana, uh, no, Alberto, you said ferradura. No, it's not a ferradura because it, as you can see, it has the green head, just like uh, the Montpellier snake. So you can see it has the green head, then it has a dark band immediately after the head and neck and then it's brown on its back and dark with some white speckles on its sides okay okay uh, the fredura is a dark snake in general so next species let's go then the grass snake this one also has a, a more or less well distributed a, a, all around the country. However, it's a little bit more difficult to find uh, in south of its range because this snake in particular likes a more humid habitat and uh, south of Portugal tends to be a little bit more dry. The grass snake 
in Portugal is very uniform in color when it's adult. Um, it can be green or brownish in color with some look, sometimes with a bit of a bluish look to it. It has big eyes. Uh, sometimes the body can be speckled with black or has uh, a few random blotches around the body that are black, okay? When it's um, a juvenile, they are really pretty looking. They have a very well-defined necklace mark uh, on, their, on their neck. It, uh, this well-defined necklace it might be white, yellow, sometimes a little bit orange. Um, then the body tends to be green-brown with speckled or streaky look, okay? They are very easy to identify. So, which species is this? So everyone, more, more, I, go, go, go. <laughs> the hell just a few here. Exactly. This one is a Montpellier snake and indeed is a female. This female is a little bit more speckly uh, than, the, um, than the others, usually more brown and uniform, but indeed is a female. It has a slightly green head, but it's not very, very uh, distinctive. What about this one here? Exactly, a horseshoe. So horseshoe, whip snake, uh, this one is either, it's not a baby, like something with less than a year because it has a rather large body for the size of its head, but it might still be a juvenile, something like a teenager. Or it is a snake that is a little bit to the south of its distribution and has a bit of more lighter colors to it and it's not as dark. But it, indeed, it's a horseshoe whip snake, no doubt about it. Now, how about this one? Exactly, it's a grass snake. That's it. One small detail, not every snake that is in water means it's a snake, actually a species from that, that, that uh, lives in water. Um, snakes actually can go into water 
practically every species because it's too hot or they just need to drink water or they're trying to escape some danger. So when you see a snake in water, it doesn't mean exactly that it is a grass snake or another species that actually dwells in the water habitat, aquatic habitat, sorry. Um, now, what about this one? Exactly. This one is a viper. Very well identified. It's quite easy, actually. You know, the eyes and then this slightly, the small horn on its snout. So, yep. Someone's with a microphone on. <laughs> Okay, um, now let's talk about the other extremely common species uh, of aquatic snake. It's a vip viperine water snake. The name viperine comes from its looks. It doesn't mean it is venomous. It just means that it actually mimics the viper. Why? This one in particular is is one of the, uh, it's actually the only species besides the viper that has a zigzag like pattern on its back. As you can see, it is a, not very well defined as the viper, but it has a somewhat zigzag like pattern on its back. Okay. Um, and then when they feel threatened, they actually inflate their bodies to look fatter and the, the head, they, it deforms the head into that triangular shape to look as vipery as it can. But then they still have the round pupils, just like every harmless snake in Portugal. Uh, and also they tend to have a line of light spots on their flanks. It's just one line, it's not a speckle, it's just one line of spots uh, on its flank. And this is quite unique to this species. It doesn't exist on the others, okay? It's a very good way to identify it. Um, in terms of size, this snake in particular doesn't tend to grow that much. It only grows up to 85 centimeters and that's quite a lot. Um, they are rather, they tend to be dark brown or dark green, um, but there is a lot of variation in terms of color on this species. But the more common one is being green or brown, okay? So, oh, and in terms of distribution, all over the country as well. Very common species. Uh, aquatic dwelling, um, they feed mainly on aquatic animals, so it's rather common to see them near rivers or other type of aquatic habitat. So let's give it a shot. Which species is this? Indeed, is a horseshoe whip snake, Fredura. Um, Albert, you said leather. No, this one is not the leather snake for various reasons. First, these are blotches on its back and not lines like the leather snake. The leather snake has actually lines, as you can see here. They are more or less well defined lines on their back. <clears throat> and um, let me see where, where were we here. 
and these are circular blotches on its back, okay? Uh, another thing, as you can see here, there is this horseshoe uh, mark on its head. So yeah, this one is a uh, ferradura or horseshoe whip snake. Then, what about this one? Look at that lovely triangular shaped head. That means absolutely nothing. Okay. So most people said it's the grass snake and to who said grass snake very well identified, uh, but someone said viperine snake, viperine snake. Well, why is this not a viperine snake? Here's one thing. First, this one is very uniform in color. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't have the zigzag-like pattern on its back. And also the green tends to be a little bit more on the bluish side, just like this one. And also there is a very important detail. Uh, the snake has a rather large eyes, while the viperine snake has very small eyes compared to this one. So if you look at this, you can see it has very large eyes, large head. It is indeed also flattening the, the head to look triangular, just like the viperine snake does. But this is a defense almost every single snake does to make it look more threatening to its predator. Um, also, uh, another thing that will make it, it's basically depth that you can f see it's different from the grass snake and the viperine snake. Okay. Um, what about the species here? Which one is it? Yeah, v Viper? Who said Viper? It's not a Viper, it's a Viperine. Viperine snake. Did you mean, did you mean Viperine or did you mean Viper? Ah, okay, okay. Okay, I was asking this because the reason why it's a Viperine snake, one of the main reasons is these, as you can see, the yellow spots along the, uh, the flank, it's very unique to this species. It is not a viper because it has a round shaped pupil. Um, and the, the, um, the, how do you say, the pattern on its back, it's not well defined. Also vipers in Portugal, don't tend to be green, and this one is green. So it's a, a, a more common, um, a more common pattern in this species. Okay. Now, let's see another species for you to identify. How about this one? Go ahead, people. Make your
Okay, Carlos, it's a juvenile of what? Yes, it's a grass snake, very well identified. Yeah. Oh, hi, Bagda. <laughs> um, what about this species here? Can oh, this one, I mean. Can you identify the species? Yep, leather. Exactly. It's an adult leather snake. Very well defined. And a very important detail here, as you can see, it also has that triangular shaped head when it feels threatened. So this snake was feeling threatened by the photographer. So it just inflates its body to look bigger and the head again with a triangular shape. That is why it is very important to ignore the idea that a triangular shaped snake, a triangular shaped head in a snake means it is venomous and dangerous to humans, okay? So just leave that idea aside. So what about this one? Can you identify the snake? This naughty, I can tell you one thing. <laughs> That's a good one, Jose. That's a good one. <laughs> so anyone can give a more hint, hunches for this one? Don't be shy, go ahead, give your opinion. Yes, it's a viperine snake. Why is this? But this one is really, really imitating, mimicking very well the viper. Why is this? This individual is a little bit more lighter and it has a more defined um, zigzag pattern on its back. As you can see, it's inflating its body to look a little bit more fat. And then the head, again, with a triangular shaped head, that means absolutely nothing. However, vipers don't have these dots along the side. And round pupil, vipers don't have round pupils. So this is a very good way to, uh, to identify a viper from the rest of the species. Again, in Portugal only, because the rest of the world works completely different. But at least in Portugal and some other countries around uh, Europe, this technique works very well, okay? So I'm going to talk now about the less common species in Portugal. Um, less common or less seen, they are, uh, they are not, uh, commonly seen because either they have, the, the, their population is not as, um, it doesn't have such high density. Um, also, some have a more reclusive uh, behaviors. So I'm going to talk about these species in particular, the false smooth snake. This one is, the distribution is not very well um, studied because this snake is, is not commonly seen because it tends to live underground uh, to hunt for their prefer uh, their favorite prey that it's the blind snake or the amphisbenian. Um, they but they do exist south at least southern uh, parts of Portugal they exist now northern parts they are few populations scattered in different areas, uh, but it's not very well defined. Every year it, they are find, uh, the, uh, there are new findings of where the species occur. So this is a work in progress, uh, the species in particular. So they are very small. Um, they tend to be gray or have this dull color to it. 
Isso é observação. É. Vão falar com os binóculos e veem as migrações. Some... Então está. Alguém está com uma coisa ligada. <laughs> so, um, sorry about that. So, it has a dark colored necklace on, on its uh, neck, ok? Um, it has a few speckles, black, darker speckles around its body, and they tend to be brown or grey. They also have this uh, very smooth look to its scales. Again, they are very small. Uh, they tend to live underground, uh, under rocks. Uh, they, they are not very easily found. Then there is the smooth snake, Coronella austriaca. They, this one is another species that has a, it's a little bit difficult to find them because they are very restricted on their distribution. They are more in the northern parts of the country uh, and there are still new places that are being found uh, with some individuals. So, but again, south of the country, you don't find the species. Uh, so, it is very similar to the, um, uh, to the false smooth snake but it doesn't have the black necklace on, on the neck. Um, they tend to be brown, gray, or sometimes pink. They have this one line here that re once it reaches the eye, it crosses the eye and goes to the nostril. Okay, and this is important to identify the next species. This species, the southern smooth snake, this one is distributed around the country, um, basically generally distributed, uh, but it's not also very common. Also very similar to the, um, uh, to the smooth snake. However, the line, remember the line that I talked about? It doesn't reach the nostril, okay? So I'm going to show you again. Smooth snake, this one line that goes from here, the neck up to the eye reaches the nostril. And then the southern smooth snake, the same line reaches the eye, but then it doesn't reach to the nostril. This is a good way to identify it, okay? And the false smooth snake only has the black, necklace on on its neck okay now for everyone that lives in the south of southern part of the country it's rather common for people to identify the southern smooth snake as a leather snake and i'm going to tell you why it is not the leather snake has a very high contrast pattern on its back while the smooth snake, the false smooth, uh, false no, southern smooth snake has a more, um, a more it, it's, it's not as contrasty as this one. This one has really dark lines against a light body. This one has more or less grayish lines against a not so light body. Okay, you can very well see the difference between the two here. Then, the last species, <coughs> sorry, the last species to mention is the Sewane viper. Um, whoever is not from Portugal and it's here from the rest of the Europe, from rest of Europe, the Sewane viper is rather similar to the adder. European adder, but um, it has, it, in Portugal it tends to be grey or brownish, but in Portugal it tends to be more on the grey side. It has a zigzag-like pattern on its back, and the difference between this viper and the Latasti viper is it lacks the little horn on the snout. 
<coughs> sorry. <coughs> it also has cat-like pupils, okay? It's a very small snake compared to the rest of the other snakes. And it's not very common. The distribution is way, way extreme north of Portugal. It only exists in areas near the border. And there is the idea of a, a slightly southern population immediately below Serra do Jerez, which is, which is way up north. Um, there is also the melanic variation, which means it's a completely black snake. To everyone who's from the southern part of the country, when you see a completely black snake, trust me, it's not this one, most likely is the horseshoe whip snake, an adult, that they, uh, they tend to be very, very dark, okay? Most people, when they say they saw a black snake, they actually saw a horseshoe whip snake and not a Sewane viper, okay? So don't worry, everyone in the South, you don't find this one in particular. The only viper that occurs in Southern parts of Portugal is the Latashti viper, okay? Well, are there any questions? Anyone has questions about snakes, anything specific, anything general? Please go ahead, just shoot. <laughs> I'm waiting. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> no one has questions? No? Uh, Okay, so Jose, he's asking if any of the last three snakes, four snakes that were mentioned exist in the whole Portugal. Well, again, the false smooth snake, the distribution is not very well studied. Most, mostly the population is on the southern part of Portugal, but there are many, many uh, isolated populations, northern part of Portugal, but to the east, to the extreme east side of Portugal. However, recently it was found once one individual in Serra da Estrela. So this, again, this species is still being studied, uh, the distribution of the species. This one in particular, only exists in the northern parts of Portugal. Um, there has, I believe that the southern population is in Serra da Estrela. I don't think there are more, they are southern than that. Um, this one exists throughout the whole country. You can find virtually any part of the country. Um, this one, Sewane Viper, they only exist extreme north in Serra do Jerez, and there is the possibility of a small popula uh, population a few kilometers south of Serra do Jerez. Um, <clears throat> now, which are the threats? Angelica Aronson, I'm sorry, I hope I said your name right. Uh, what do you mean the threats? Threats for the snakes or threats to humans? For the snakes, okay. Yeah, oh, the human. <laughs> Basically the main threats for the, the snakes are humans, unfortunately. Uh, and human also in, interfering with snakes. So <sighs> destruction of habitat is probably the main reason. So fi forest fires are really devastating. Um, constructions are also, uh, so the destruction of huge areas for the construction of buildings and 
uh, whatever it also it's a problematic especially for species like the vipers that they are very very dependent on their territory they are not snakes that adapt very well to change um, also another threat are domestic animals cats for example are very uh, are a huge threat to, to baby snakes uh, one cat can per day kill 10 baby snakes which is devastating not a predator can pull that off but however cat, feral cats can do that uh, it's not a good number um, yes Jose uh, forest fires are quite destructive um, also human persecution uh, the, the the hunt not hunting but uh, the idea that every time you see a snake it has to be killed so that's also very detrimental to the snake population um as for a black snake in jiris is a viper well not exactly um some snakes in Jerez can also be very dark. For example, the water snakes, the grass snake, and the, the um, vipering snakes. They can be very dark. Also, there are individuals of Montpellier snakes that can be extremely dark. And sometimes when a person doesn't get a good look of the snake, it's rather hard to identify it as uh, other thing besides a viper. So it's not guaranteed that everything that it is black in Jerez is a viper, but you should be careful and uh, take, take care and not touch the snake if you're not sure what species it is. Um, the Portuguese name for the grass snake, cobra de água de colar. Colar por causa do colar quando é bebê. Uh, venomous snakes. Okay, Portugal has four venomous snakes. Two are dangerous, and the other two are rear fanged with mild venom. So, what do I mean by this? The two dangerous ones are the vipers. They can deliver uh, just with one bite. They can deliver the venom uh, into our blood system. However, uh, there are other two species that are venomous. It's the Montpellier snake. They are venomous as well. Where is the image? Got lost. Here, the Montpellier snake is also venomous and the false smooth snake is also venomous. However, the, these two species are rear fanged. Rear fang means that the uh, teeth, the teeth that actually inject the venom are in the back of the mouth, which means the snake really needs to get a very good grip on you before it's able to inject venom. Also, it's not a very efficient way of injecting venom because the when they bite, they need to stay slightly longer attached to you in order for the venom to enter your system. Um, but these two species have a very mild venom, very mild. So it's not considered dangerous to humans. I have been under the effect several times of Montpellier snake venom and and for many other people that I know, uh, it doesn't give you much of a, um, it, it doesn't affect you much. However, there might be people who are allergic to the venom, so they should be careful if they get envenomated, okay? More. <clears throat> Okay, the idea that licrens is poisonous. Okay, poisonous venomous, I mean. Licrens is the slow worm. 
And indeed, northern, um, uh, actually in the, whole po in the whole country, there is this idea that this animal uh, that is actually a lizard is extremely dangerous to, to humans, which is a lie. They are not venomous. They have nothing, nothing that could cause any kind of danger to humans. They are very, very friendly animals, actually. They are very useful to, to eat um, pests that might destroy uh, our food resources. So they are very, very, actually very useful in agriculture and people, for some reason, think they are venomous and kill them. They are harmless. They don't do anything to humans. As for projects helping some of the snakes, well, there is uh, Angelica, which is uh, exactly what I was going to uh, mention now. There is this one project, Cobras de Portugal, uh, which uh, was um, started by uh, BioLiving uh, and me. And the idea is to actually help, oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, the idea is to distribute as much information as possible to everyone in order for people to understand the snakes and not harm snakes, uh, be able to identify the species, uh, understand the distribution of several species, trying to improve the relationship between humans and snakes. So this project started this year and we are working on this. Uh, hopefully next year we will be doing courses. Uh, unfortunately this year due to COVID, uh, everything had to be postponed, but the idea is to make workshops so that people can understand how to deal with snakes, how to um, identify the species, and uh, if you wish to support this uh, project, uh, just go to Facebook and leave a like. And uh, that's all I actually have to offer for now. <laughs> is there any more questions or is it all? Okay, thank you then. Um, well, all I actually ask of you is to leave a like on this, on this page. Um, in the future, we will be giving a lot more information. Um, share with your friends, just, uh, just share around the world also because Portugal has very interesting animals, um, please. And now I will give I will pass the word to Andre to give some closing remarks. Um, so for those of you who, uh, who want to follow the page or, or uh, find more about this, uh, this project, we will be sending you the link of this, of this webinar, uh, the YouTube link, and I'll add to that, to that email, I'll add any information that uh, Davina wants to share with you. At least the Facebook page will be there. Um, and the, uh, the BioLiving Association page as well. Um, so you can all just uh, check the, their, their Facebook page. I don't know if the, I don't know if, um, if I, I had to go on the phone for a second. I don't know if Davina mentioned that uh, they are very responsive on their Facebook page. So um, if you, if you want to go there and talk to them, they are pretty much always there. It's a, <laughs> they actually are recognized by Facebook as extremely responsive which is a, it's a very hard status to reach. Uh, so just visit them, post any pictures you want to identify, or ask any questions. Um, so yeah, yes, we, just help, we share basically, the, help share the word. We, we have already a, a very interesting experiences of people at 3 a.m. asking someone to please come and get a snake from my bedroom and all of those situations. Unfortunately, they, were, they lived way, way far from us, so we couldn't help them on that regard. Um, but we did show them the techniques how to put the snake in a box and then call... Uh, 
some authority to go and help them. But sí. we are online most of the time and we are very quick to respond. So if you find a snake and you really need to be sure if it is a venomous and, or dangerous snake, you can just take a photo and send us to, uh, uh, to the Facebook and we will reply almost immediately. So feel free to do that. Um, thank you all for coming. Um, thank you again, Davina. I think this, uh, this format of having a quiz in the mid, mid webinar is really, it's really nice. We've had many different formats. Uh, each has its own uh, magic, I guess, but uh, I think this works very well to keep people engaged. Uh, it also helps people to put their knowledge to the test as soon as they get it, which is really nice. One of the, one of the problems I think with, uh, with snakes identification that you don't get to put that uh, that knowledge to the test very often so we did that so that was that was very good um and thank you oh, you're sharing okay <laughs> thank yeah. you for um thank you for being here again and um thank you all for being here as well um thank you so much for everyone really oh and i uh, just a quick mention uh, this activity was done completely for free uh for by the Dina and all other webinars are being done completely for free. So um, let's just give some love back and just follow the page and share the word. And that that that's pretty much the least we can do. So I invite you all to do that, please. Mm -hmm. um, Jose Souza, I'm gonna send uh, the links to, to your emails in a few days, okay? Vou enviar, vou enviar toda a informação que a Davina quer partilhar para os vossos emails daqui a uns dias, okay? Obrigado a todos. Thank you all. And um, see you next time. Ciao. Bye. Thank you.